Chapter 77, Psalm 77 is where we're at, and we're going to do our five-minute history lesson real quick. And I know that uh, you, some of you may be confused of why in the world we are doing this, but you will see as time goes by. And this will actually help you to understand a little bit of Christian heritage and our Christian history here in the United States and also uh, church history. So that's the reason why we are uh, working on this. The Bible says in Psalms 917, the wicked shall be turned into hell and all the nations that forget God. And so we've been capitalizing on that kind of as our capital verse regarding this particular series. And the, the Bible also says, and here's the other passage of Scripture that we're memorizing or that we're talking about, Psalms 33, 12 says, Blessed is the nation whose God is the Lord and the people whom he hath chosen for his own inheritance. And we said last week, I understand that that has to do with the children of Israel specifically and the uh, nation of Israel, but blessed is any nation whose God is the Lord. And uh, the Bible, in Psalm 917, whenever it says, the wicked shall be turned into hell and all the nations that forget God, that has to do with not just the, uh, the children of Israel, but it has to do with all nations. So um, we're talking just a little bit about um, American history and church history. So with the effort of trying to get you un in understand what your American heritage is, and then also a little bit of the understanding may go to your children. That's what we're hoping. Now, there's a crime that's happening in American history classes in the United States, and that is that we study American history and we, then we segment European history and church history from each other. Most of us did not take any church history whenever we were in college. Most of us did not take European history when we were in college. But you cannot fully understand American history without really understanding what's going on in Europe. So we're going to kind of combine the three as we go through. For instance, I'll give you an, uh, an example of this. Martin Luther, which was the beginning of the Reformation in Europe, was 10 years old <clears throat> when Christopher Columbus sailed for America. And the events that were going on in Europe are going to dictate what the history is going to be of Europe and America for the next 300 years of the events that are going on. So we're going to look at that, and we're going to actually bring up a geography map. Don't let that scare you. I know that most of us probably failed geography when we were in school, and if you went to public school, you probably never even took geography. So uh, we're just going to look at this uh, real quickly here, and this is Europe, and you've got Spain down here, modern day. This, is, this map is from the 1400s, from the 15th century here, and you've got Spain down here in the south, you've got France, you've got England, and you've got Italy. Those are the four main countries at this period of time that are kind of running the show, if you will. Um, uh, at this point in time, in the 1400s and in the coming up the 15th century, um, uh, our, the, the Ferdinand and Isabel, which is the ones that, that wound up funding Christopher Columbus, are here in Spain. They're on the throne, and they have just fought and have just got done running the Moors out of Spain. And so in Spain right now, for 17 centuries, even before the time of Christ, the Moors had invaded Spain, and there had been kind of battles going back and forth, and the king and queen are involved in this great big battle here in Spain. And uh, uh, Isabella and uh, uh, Queen Isabella and Ferdinand, they had just kind of won. And as a matter of fact, this war that had gone on, Queen Isabella and uh, King Ferdinand, the reason why that they funded Christopher Columbus was because they wanted to say thank you to God for the victory that they had over the Moors. And so they wanted to fund the gospel going forward, and that's the reason why that they funded Christopher Columbus. Okay? So in 1492, whenever Christopher Columbus sails the ocean blue, the reason why that he gets the funding from uh, Ferdinand and Isabella, the king and queen of Spain, is because they wanted to say thank you to God, do something for God, because the victory that they had over the Moors. And that's very important to remember that. England and France at this point in time are just coming up to the end of a hundred years war. That's what it's called. Anybody know how long the hundred years war lasted? It didn't last a hundred years. It lasted 115 years. I don't know why they call it the hundred years war, but it's kind of funny. Uh, the, in, on Jeopardy periodically, you'll see that as a question. It lasted 115 years approximately, and there's a little bit of uh, about 110 to 116 is what people say. But they're coming up to the end of the hundred years war. And when the wars are being raised, the reason why I bring that up is because these three countries here, France, England and Spain are all three involved in wars. And when you get wars begin, wars begin, you come up, uh, the rise of nationalism begins. That is, our country is the best. And there's a problem. Because at this point in time, 
The Catholic Church controls, the papacy controls all of this area. All the areas that you see right there, the Catholic Church is highly influential, and not just influential, but controlling. And if you remember anything about your uh, history, at one point in time, there was some uh, trying to retake uh, uh, Jerusalem. You know, the, uh, what are those things? the Crusades were going on. And from, uh, from about the uh, 10th century all the way through about the 15th century, the Crusades were going on, and they were trying to take back Jerusalem from the, from the Muslims. And uh, the church was controlling that. The Catholic church was controlling that. And so with the rise of nationalism going on, with the rise of nationalism going on, the Pope is slowly losing influence in these countries. So they put out what they call a papal bull. And I don't know why they call it bull, but there's a reason why we call things bull whenever you're lying today. They put out papal bulls. And in 1302, a pope puts out a papal bull. And uh, whenever he puts out this papal bull, and I'm going to read it to you here in just a second, the reason why he put out that papal bull is because of the rise of nationalism going on inside of England and Europe and France and Spain. The reason why he put those out is because of the rise of nationalism. And so he's losing, he's slowly losing uh, influence. Let me tell you just a little bit about the Crusades. What was going on with the Crusades with the papacy is, is that they were trying to influence people to go and to take back Jerusalem, including children. And there's a rumor, we don't know whether or not it's completely true or not, but this is to tell you a little bit about what's going on. There was a rumor that 30,000 30, children, somewhere in there, went and started to cross the Alps in order to take back Jerusalem, and all of them starved to death or were sold into slavery. Because one of the boys got a vision from the Mother Mary that they would be successful in taking back Jerusalem. And so people sent their children and they went to go back over the Alps in order to get to the Alps and then come back over and uh, go over to the Promised Land in order to take back Jerusalem, and they never made it. Things like that were going on. Um, uh, people, whenever people were beginning to get dismayed, all of a sudden somebody in the church would find a piece of the cross that Jesus died on. And they would so hold it up and say, this is a sign that we are going to be victorious. And people would say, oh my goodness, there's the cross. And to this day... That peace is being worshipped in Jerusalem. They'll have it as a symbol. And so a bunch of people would get together and they would go on another crusade. And at one point in time, things were uh, going downhill again and somebody would find a uh, piece of the nail that crucified Jesus. And to this day, that kind of stuff's being worshipped. Well, just coincidentally at that time, uh, you know, everybody's morality or everybody's morals were down. And so uh, the, the Roman Catholic Church would come along and gain a little bit of... Uh, notoriety through those uh, findings, quote unquote. And so that's where all the bones of, you know, saints came along and people claimed that, you know, if you fell upon the bones, then you prayed over the bones that you would get healed and things of that nature. That's where all that stuff came along. So all of those lies, if you will, were being kind of uh, uh, seen in the Catholic Church. And so the Catholic Church was waning in their popularity. So Boniface VIII comes along to the forefront at the end of the Hundred Years' War, and while it's being fought, and he issues this papal bull called Unum Sanctum. And this papal bull has never been rescinded by the Catholic Church. It still stands. And Unum Sanctum means one ruler or one controller. And this is what it, this is what it says. It was originally written in Latin, of course, and this is translated into English as this. Upon our faith, quote, Upon our faith we are obliged to believe and hold that there is one holy and apostolic Catholic Church, and we, believe firm, uh, we firmly believe and profess that outside of her there is no salvation or remission of sins. Now this was backed up in Vatican II with 96 anathema. Okay, 96 anathema means 96 curses on anyone who is not a member of the Catholic Church, in short. And that is, you have no hope of getting into heaven outside of the Roman Catholic Church. That's what this means. Another quote further on down in the papal bull. That in her power are two swords taught in the Gospels, namely the spiritual and the temporal. Therefore, both are in the power of the church, namely the spiritual and the temporal. The latter is to be used for the church and the former by the church. Furthermore, further on down, furthermore, we decree that every human creature is subject to the Roman pontiff this we declare, we proclaim, we define to be altogether necessary to salvation. That every human creature is subject to the Roman pontiff. 
That's what they said. They decreed that. Now, here you are in a rise of nationalism, and you are the king or the queen of one of these countries, and this papal bull comes out, and all of your subjects are Roman Catholic. And the Pope from Italy basically says to you and to your people, if you are not subject to whatever I say and you do not disobey the king if we have a disagreement, then you are excommunicated from the church and you are going to hell. Would that worry you? <laughs> it would worry you, wouldn't it? That's the rise of nationalism that's coming on in the United, or excuse me, in the Europe at this time, and that's what's going to dictate. That spirit is what's going to dictate the process in Europe for the next 400 years, and also people coming to the United States. So we'll pick it up there again next week, but uh, that's what I wanted to see for this week. I wanted you to see that papal bull and also the rise of nationalism in Europe, and it gets very interesting from here. All right, Psalms chapter 77.